Praise the Lord and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is a broadcast of Apostolic Holiness Church of Jesus Christ located in Houston, Texas. Elder James Eugene Manuel is the pastor and general overseer. Prepare your hearts to receive a word from God as Elder James Eugene Manuel minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Very good to see you, Brother Lewis. Amen. 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 You're more than welcome. Amen. In the house of the Lord. And when we say the house of the Lord, we're not referring to this building. Amen. Even these so called, amen, cathedral looking places. Amen. Those are not churches. <clears throat> amen. Praise God. Those are buildings. Amen. The church is actually, amen, consists of the people. Amen. That's why the word of God refers to it as the body of Christ and members. Amen. One in particular. <clears throat> Amen. In Jesus' name. Man can make buildings, but only God can build a church. Amen. And the church of Jesus Christ is one that a person can't join. Amen. You can't write your name on some piece of paper and say, I want to join church. We know that's going on in many of these so-called churches today, but when it comes to the church of Jesus Christ, amen, it's not writing your name on a piece of paper. It's about being born into the church of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So one has to be born into the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's being born again of the water and of the spirit. Amen. Praise God. Because we all been born into this world naturally. Amen. Praise God. All of us have been born. Amen. Hallelujah. As a result of a man and a woman coming together. Amen. Whether it was legit, whether they had it on paper, or whether they were shacking, or whether it was a one night stand gone wrong. Amen. Praise God. We got into this world. Amen. Through the natural birth. Amen. Praise God. But Jesus, amen, told Nicodemus. Amen. He said, you got to be born again. Amen. Praise God. Of the water and of the spirit in order to enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus wasn't referring to being born the second time naturally. Amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. We will go there. Amen. In Jesus' name. So that's John chapter 3. For the gospel according to St. John chapter 3. You say John? John chapter 3. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> so the gospel according to St. John chapter 3. Okay. One, verse 1. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm begin at verse 1. Uh -huh. Verse 1. <clears throat> John. So the gospel according to St. John chapter 3. Okay, when everyone gets there, you have to say amen. Right here. John chapter 3. Okay. So the gospel according to St. John chapter 3, we begin at verse 1. <clears throat> All right, praise the Lord. In verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews, amen, and the Pharisees, of course, were the religious leaders of that day, amen, mm -hmm. that, you know, the average layman looked up to, amen, they, they was considered the, you know, the, the highest of the high in terms of the keepers of the law, of the law of Moses, so people looked up to them, amen, but hallelujah, Jesus, amen, did not look up to the Pharisees, amen. <laughs> Amen. On many occasions, he rebuked the Pharisees in his prize. He called them hypocrites. Mm. He even went so far as to call them serpents. A generation of vipers. A generation means brood. Amen. And we know a viper is a snake. Amen. And praise God, we know that vipers are poisonous. Amen. They are deadly. So saved by the mercy of God, you get bit by a viper. Amen. And you don't get no medical attention. Quick, amen, you won't be long for this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he referred to them as being as deadly, amen, and vicious as snakes. Amen. Because spiritually, that's what they were. But, amen, there were a few Pharisees who humbled themselves, such as Nicodemus. He was one of them few that 
amen, recognize Jesus for who he is or who he was, that he was Emmanuel, God with us, amen. And, and of course, uh, we went over this, I believe, uh, you know, a week or so ago, amen, that there were certain, amen, saints or brethren that used to be Pharisees that were believers in Jesus Christ, but they still had that leaven, that Pharisee leaven in them. Amen. And they was trying to, amen, mess the Gentiles up and, you know, trying to get them to keep the law of Moses. That's Acts chapter 15. Amen. In case you're curious about that, you can, of course, read that on your own time. But Nicodemus was a Pharisee, amen, and he had a position of authority, amen, in that day. So it says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. So he, he approached Jesus, amen, in the nighttime. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So Nicodemus, amen, recognized and, amen, he gave honor to the fact that, amen, God was working through Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is God. Amen. Even though Nicodemus at this point didn't have the full revelation, he just knew that Jesus was a prophet and God was using him. He said, Can't, no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Amen. So he was one of those few, amen, religious leaders, amen, who humbled himself and, amen, gave respect, amen, to what God was doing. Amen. I believe, amen, there are a few, amen, sincere, amen, false prophets today. Yeah. Amen. Who, who just sincerely, amen, think that they're doing God's will. Amen. Whether they in the Baptist church or whatever other religion they in, they think they're doing God's will. Amen. I even got a call from some of them. Amen. Since I, you know, branched out and, amen, been in ministry. Amen. One of them even called me and said, brother, keep on preaching. Amen. False prophet to the court called me and said, yeah, keep preaching the truth. Amen. Because a lot of these false prophets, they grew up in holiness. Yeah. They know about Acts 238. They know about holiness in hell. They know about the apostles' doctrine. But they backslid because they want to get paid. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because this type of word, you know, amen, praise God, you can't make a living off this pretty much. Amen. You have to work with your own hands. Amen. Let the Lord really bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. So, amen. A lot of them, they backslid because they, they want the fame and the fortune. Amen. I'm not going to mention his name, but amen, he called me, amen. And then another one that called me maybe about a couple of years before he did, amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. So it's a few of them out there, amen. And like the Bible say, only a few going to find his way. That's right. Amen. So Nicodemus was one of them few, amen, who humbled himself yep. in spite of his religious credentials. And then he said the same, verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. In verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, which means truly, truly, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus said, except you be born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. And he's not referring to only males, amen. He's referring to male and female, amen. He's referring to mankind, amen, both genders, amen. And then verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Hmm. Amen. To not think Nicodemus, he's thinking naturally, amen. Jesus said born again, amen. Nicodemus thinking about a second natural birth. Right. Say, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Amen. Praise God. You just think about that. Amen. Who, who can do that? No one. Amen. Praise God. We, we fully grown. Amen. Amen. 200 pounds or more. Amen. On average. Amen. What it look like we trying to attempt to go the second time into our mother's womb? And then what if our mothers are dead? That means, amen, if Jesus meant that, that means we can't be born again. Amen. So Jesus wasn't referring to a second natural birth. And then verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water 
and of the Spirit. Amen. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So now Jesus, amen, clarify what type of birth it is. Amen. It's a birth of the water and it's a birth of the Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> and the book of Hebrews even makes mention of the doctrine of baptism. Amen. Let me see if I can go there right quick. So you can hold your place in uh, John 3 and 6, well, John 3 and 5, and we're going to go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6. So hold your place there, and let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. And we'll begin at verse 1. So Hebrews, that's kind of further on in the New Testament. Somewhat towards the end, not quite, you almost know, close to the end. Yeah. Yeah, almost at the end, but not quite. Hebrews is accredited as the, uh, the last epistle that the Apostle Paul wrote, but, you know. And so chapter 6 of the book of Hebrews, or the general epistle to the Hebrews. Chapter 6, and then... <clears throat> So you can hold your place in John 3 and 5. <clears throat> and begin at verse 1. Oh, so Hebrews chapter 6 <clears throat> and verse 1 it says therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God because amen having faith in Jesus Christ amen believing in the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ about his death, burial, and resurrection, amen, we have to likewise be a partaker in it, amen. So that's why verse 1, it says, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. So this book was to the, uh, the Hebrew saints, amen, the Jewish, amen, brothers and sisters, amen. And so he was telling them not to, amen, go back to the drawing board, amen. So repentance from dead works, because, you know, you have to repent, amen, from, amen, dead works of sin, amen. Because sin is a dead work because the word of God says the wages of sin is death, That's right. amen. So you keep practicing sin, amen, it's going to lead to death. So in other words, it's dead works, amen. Something that's not going to bring life, amen, to your soul, praise God. And then it says, and of faith toward God. Because we have to have faith in God. Amen. Yes, the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. If we don't believe that God exists and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, amen, we can't please him. Amen. Because the word of God says the just shall live by faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Hallelujah. Even though we don't Amen. Naturally see God Almighty Jesus Christ. Amen. We know he's real. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because he has shown himself, amen, real in our lives. Amen. I know he's shown himself real in my life. Praise Absolutely. God. The direction I was going, amen. Hallelujah. I know it was the hand of God, amen, that came upon me 14 years ago. Amen. Hallelujah. At the age of 21. Amen. Praise God. I'm 35 now. Amen. It's been 14 years ago, amen, since God got my attention. Hallelujah. And I thank God that he did. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank God that he getting your attention, amen, because you see, amen, what's going on in this world. See that it's getting worse and worse. Amen. People, amen, that you either grew up with or know, family members or whatever, amen, praise God, their minds are being just totally, amen, turned over to the hand of the devil. 
<laughs> hey man, things you you think like, man, I no way he would do that, or no way she would stoop that low. Hey man, they stooping that low. Hey man, because they're you know ha taking pleasure. <coughs> hey man, in walking in darkness. That's what happens when a person has pleasure in sin. Of course, you know the devil's gonna keep taking them deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Because there's only two masters. Amen. Jesus said it. He said no man can serve two masters. Okay. You either going to love one or hate the other. You're going to cleave to one or despise the other. So you're either going to cleave to God and hate the devil or you're going to cleave to the devil and hate God. Amen. It's either one or two. You're either going to draw close to the light. Amen. Or you're going to keep walking in darkness. Amen. Until, amen, you, hallelujah, reach the end of the road, as they say. Amen, which is your lifespan being discontinued, amen, and your soul goes to the place where it was prepared. And we know that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people, amen, likewise hell and lake of fire, yeah, amen. It, it was originally prepared for the devil and his angels, but it's also prepared for those who choose to reject, amen, serving Jesus Christ, amen, in the beauty of holiness, amen. I ain't talking about religion. You got a lot of fake Christians, amen, in these churches today. Saying that they Christians, amen, just straight life. Are hmm. you a Christian, amen, and you still doing the devil's bidding, amen. No mind to serve God, amen, passed on down, amen. We, amen, sister uh, Manuel White, amen, we grew up in the church, amen. Pastor was smoking in the church. Mm -hmm. You remember that, don't you? Smoking his pipe, smoking his cigars, had table, amen, in, the, in his office, amen, had the premium channels, amen, nudity and everything else, amen, watch what he want to watch, amen. Pastor Jackson? Mm-hmm, mm. amen, I was trying to avoid mentioning his name, but I'm just telling the I truth, just don't want to amen, I ain't making it up, amen, praise <laughs> God, all kind of wickedness going on in the Baptist church, <laughs> amen, and we seen it firsthand, but they supposed to be Christians, but yet they serving the devil, they doing the devil's bidding, amen, they they serving the lust of their flesh, the lust of their eyes, the pride of their life. Amen. A lot of them full of pride and arrogance. Amen. Look down on people. Mm. Amen. Praise God. We're not supposed to look down on nobody. It doesn't matter if they poor or if they have a handicap or, or some sort of, you know, sickness or something. We're not supposed to look down on nobody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're supposed to love everybody the same and treat everybody with respect. Amen. And dignity. Amen. Praise God. And like Jesus said, as you would have others to do it to you, you do so to them likewise. Amen. Praise God. We grew up here, you treat others like you want to be treated. Yes, amen. Right. That concept came from Jesus Christ. He didn't word it that way, but amen, that's the way we're supposed to do. We're supposed to treat people like we want to be treated. We don't want to be disrespected. We don't want to be, amen, abused. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You ain't going to go to heaven, amen, with that kind of behavior no way if you don't repent. Amen. So we still in Hebrews chapter 6, amen, verse 2. And then it says, of the doctrine of baptisms. Amen. So that coincides with John chapter 3, verse 5, when Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, amen, that's baptism of water, and of the Spirit, amen, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Hebrews chapter 6, verse 2. It says of the doctrine of baptisms. It has an S on it. Amen. Because, amen, being baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, that's the baptism of water. Amen. Or the birth of the water, as Jesus is referring to. Amen. And when God filled you with the Holy Ghost, amen, you speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, or you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, or the birth of the Spirit, according to John 3 and 5, and of course, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, that's the baptism of the Spirit. Amen. That's why, amen, John the Baptist, amen, had told them, he said, amen, praise God, I am not worthy, amen, that, hallelujah, that to unloose his shoes, speaking of Jesus Christ, he said, but I, I'm sent before him, amen, praise God. He said, but there's one coming that's even mightier than I, whose shoes latch I'm not worthy to unloose. He was talking about Jesus. He said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. So, man of God can baptize you in water. That's that, 
after repentance, amen, after you turn from your sins, you need that baptism in Jesus' name, not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost titles, amen, because no one in the Bible was baptized in those titles. When Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19, to go ye therefore and teach our nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, he said name. He specifically said name, N-A-M-E. And now we went to school, and then we got at least, amen, praise God, middle school, high school, amen, education, praise God. And we learned these, amen, differences between a name and a, and a, a pronoun and a noun, amen, a name and a title. Amen. Amen. We learned that in elementary. Amen. So we know, amen, that father is not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. Amen. That, that's just a title. Amen. <coughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But Jesus is the name. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 43, he said, I am come in my father's name. He didn't say my father's title. He said, I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. So the name of the Father is Jesus. Of course, we know the name of the Son is Jesus, Matthew 1, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus, John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my Name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. So Jesus' name, water baptism, amen, that's, amen, the baptism or the birth of the water. Amen. And when God filled you with the Holy Ghost, amen, that's the birth of the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. And you ain't going to have to make it up. No one else going to have to make it up. Praise God. You let God take control of your tongue. I tell you, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. You, you, you may have to seek it. Amen. Like I did. Amen. You, you may have to fast and pray and tear it. Amen. Until the power come down. I tell you. Because hallelujah. Amen. You seek the Holy Ghost. I mean you will find it. Amen. And do whatever is necessary. Amen. Whatever is in your life that you know. Amen. It's not of God. You need to. Amen. Sanctify yourself. Amen. Praise God. Things that you got in your house that you know. Amen. Praise God. That you need to throw away. Amen. You need to throw it out. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I throw away those rap CDs and R&B and porno and, and all that filthy foolishness. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I have to repent of that. Amen. And worldly, amen, worldly clothes looking like a gigolo and looking like a gangster. Amen. Praise God. Worldly jewelry. Amen. Praise God. I have to cut the hair. Amen. Praise God. The cornrow braids. Amen. Threw away the gold teeth. Threw away the earrings. Amen. You have to hallelujah. Amen. Deny yourself. Amen. And take up your cross and follow Jesus. Amen. You have to go with Jesus all the way. Hallelujah. And God will bless you. Amen. Yes, because once, amen, the house is clean. Amen. Then that's when the Holy Ghost is going to come on in. Amen. And you may have to fast and pray. Amen. Praise God. And you may have to call on Jesus. Amen. To Jesus take control of that tongue. Amen. And you speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Amen. Because that's how a lot of that's how a lot of saints today receive the Holy Ghost. They just kept calling on Jesus. Amen. They kept saying Jesus, Jesus. After they were fasting and praying, Amen, and tearing for the Holy Ghost, calling on Jesus, till the Holy Ghost took control. They were no longer seeing Jesus. They were speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. That's how I received the Holy Ghost. I kept calling on Jesus till the Lord took control of my tongue. Amen. And that was, praise God, April the 26th, 2005. Amen. Today's date. Pretty close to that date. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, a, a, today the 23rd mm -hmm. of April. Praise God. So, amen. That will be 13 years ago since, amen, I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. So, I'm not telling you something that I haven't experienced myself. Because the husbandmen that labor must first be partaker of the fruit. Amen. So a, a true man of God, he has to experience, amen, salvation himself before he would be qualified to preach to anybody else. Amen. We, we, we hear that. I'm, I, you know, praise God. I, I thank God that, amen, 
Brother Lewis is here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because now I'm, I'm bringing back to memories. Mm -hmm. Amen. Before the Lord saved me, when I was still getting my drink on, one time me and me and Amen, stepdad Earl, amen, before he became stepdad, amen, we were sitting on the porch, amen, drinking 40s, and then I called myself trying to get a little religious conversation, <laughs> and, 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 and Brother Lewis, you probably don't remember, amen, but I remember it clear as day, and, and I called myself, amen, trying to witness, amen, to stepdad Earl. Amen. At the time, he was mama's boyfriend, Earl. Amen. Before they put it on paper. And I was like, hey, man, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know what, you know what, you know what Brother Lewis told me? <laughs> he said, well, that, that, that's all right, everything, but yeah. you got to get yourself right first. Yeah, well, but you can right. tell anyone else something. That's you right. got to get yourself right. <laughs> back to drinking this water. <laughs> Amen. I felt conviction. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thought about that. I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you get Getting drunk and high trying to tell someone about Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Even the devil will rebuke you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got to get yourself right first and let God sanctify and purge you. Amen. And Hallelujah, and stand for the Lord. Amen, praise God. And then in due time, amen, God, uh, amen, you'll be a witness, amen, a witness and testify. Look, this is what God did for me. You know how I used to be before Jesus came into my life and changed me. And now you see the type of person I am today. Amen. Still got the same first and last name, amen, but a totally, amen, new creature in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, amen, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. Amen. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. That that drinking, smoking, having to be passed away. Amen. Lying and cussing. Amen. And talking about folk, mistreating folk. Amen. That that will be passed away. Amen. You let God work. Praise God. Then the Bible said, Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Then you'll be able to tell someone else, Hey, Amen. You surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He'll bless you. Amen. Just as he blessed me. And most importantly, amen, when you breathe your last breath and die, you don't have to worry about going to hell. Amen. You go to heaven. Amen. With the saints. Amen. And see the Lord's face in peace. Amen. And dwell with him for eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. And just like that song we sung, you want to hear him say well done. That's right. Amen. That's the only way you're going to hear him say well done. Amen. You have to live a well done lifestyle. Amen. A well done, holy life. Amen. Praise God. You have to repent of your sins. Amen. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in water for the remission of sins. And let God fill you with the Holy Ghost and live a holy life so you can, so he'll tell you well done. Amen. False prophets say, well, just repeat the sinner's prayer. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. <laughs> Keep living like you're living and, and you'll be saved. Amen. I tell you, that's a lie. Amen. From the devil himself. Amen. Because only a devil, amen, will tell you that kind of lie. Amen. But that's what's going on. Yeah. Amen. That's why they, they that's why they're so rich. Amen. That's why they got hundreds and thousands of members. Amen. Because they lying to people. Amen. The devil is blessing them. Amen. Because he's doing the devil's bidding. Amen. Lying and deceiving the people. Amen. And the thing is, most people they, they want to be in that deception. Yeah. Because they don't want to live right no way. They don't want to live a holy life. They don't want to be a, a true, amen, Christian because the term or word Christian means to be like Christ. Amen. An imitator of Jesus Christ. Jesus wasn't doing the things that these so-called Christians are doing today. Amen. They want Jesus Christ wasn't clubbing. Amen. Jesus Christ wasn't sleeping around with strange flesh. Amen. Jesus Christ wasn't no liar. Amen. But you got men, these so-called Christians, they lie. They, they lie on their tax return. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Doing all kind of devilment. Amen. Some of them are pedophiles. Amen. Sex perverts. Amen. All kind of amen. Filthy food is going on, but they still call themselves Christians. Amen. Even the amen so-called pastor. Amen. Perverted. Amen. That's why some of them dying of AIDS. Amen. God turned them over to that kind of lifestyle. They want to be a lying false prophet. Amen. I tell you, praise God. It's just best to just 
Hallelujah. Live for Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, don't even play games. Amen. Amen. If you want to play games, don't play games with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God don't play no games. Amen. If you want to play games, amen, get you a Nintendo. Amen. Get you a Sega. Amen. Get you an Xbox. Amen. <coughs> Praise God and play with that. Amen. But don't try to play with God. Amen. Because he don't play. Amen. So, amen, we still in a... Okay, so now let's go back to John 3. Amen. So John chapter 3, just want to point that out, the doctrines of baptisms in Hebrews 6 and 2. So we're back to John chapter 3, verse 5. <clears throat> and Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And then verse 6, he says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So Jesus, amen, signified there is a difference between the natural birth and the spiritual birth. He said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Amen. So, amen, however, amen, circumstance, amen, amen, came about, amen, we were born. Amen. Into this world. Amen. Through the natural. Amen. Born of the flesh. Our natural bodies. But he said that that which is born of the spirit, so capital S. Amen. Speaking of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Speaking of the spirit of Jesus Christ. He said that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And then he says, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And he didn't say you you know, it's an optional thing. You know, you can be born again if you want to. You know, amen. Praise God. It's not a buffet, amen. Praise God. He said you must be born again. So it is a necessity. It is imperative, amen, that you be born again of the water and of the spirit, amen. In other words, obey the gospel of Jesus Christ through repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, and being filled with the Holy Ghost in order to enter into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> in verse 8 it says the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof so when the wind blows amen where it want to blow and you can hear the sound of the wind amen depending on how hard it blows you can hear the sound of the wind amen but it says but canst not tell whence it cometh so you can't tell where it's coming from and whether it goeth or where it's going so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So, meaning that naturally you can't see, amen, praise God, those who are born of the Spirit, amen, but it has a sound, and that sound is speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, amen. So you can't see, amen, the Holy Ghost, but hallelujah, you can feel them, amen, just like you can feel the wind, and you can hear someone who is full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just as you can hear the sound of the wind. Amen. So when a person is full of the Holy Ghost, they will speak in other tongues as the Spirit of the utterance. Amen. According to Acts chapter 2. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 38. Amen. And that's not the only, amen, scripture in the Bible that bears witness to Jesus' name, baptism, and Holy Ghost and filling. Amen. So we're getting ready to close. Let's go into Acts chapter 2. Amen. So that's the next book over. Or the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And we begin at verse 1. So Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when you get there, you say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, amen, that's the birth of the Spirit. Amen. As Jesus mentioned in John chapter 3. Hallelujah. 
Amen. That's the birth of the Spirit. Amen. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you will speak in other tongues as the capital S, the capital Spirit, gives them utterance. Amen. So, of course, we can just skip on down. I know we go over here quite a bit. Amen. Praise God. But this is, amen, how the church was initiated. Amen. In Acts chapter 2. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ, amen, did not start it in Europe. Amen. It didn't start it in Rome. It didn't start it in England and Holland. Amen. With these Protestants and Catholics and, amen, Presbyterians and Seventh-day Adventists. Amen. Amen. Christianity or holiness, amen, is not European made. Amen. But we know that, amen, most of, amen, the folk in this country and even in the world, they're following a European brand of Christianity. Amen. And we reject that mess, amen, with a, amen. They have images of a, amen, pale looking man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Amen. And we know that's a lie because Jesus was not a, amen, a European. Amen. Pale Caucasian looking man. Amen. That's a lie from the devil. Amen. And hallelujah. Because keep in mind, Jesus was a carpenter. Amen. Even though he was God Almighty, but in the flesh, amen, his trade, he was a carpenter. And back then, they didn't have, amen, modern day tools like we have now. Mm -hmm. Amen. So carpentry was very hard, amen, and tedious work. <coughs> amen. It was a lot of physical work. Amen, with carpentry, because, you know, amen, they had to cut down the trees, amen, they didn't have saws and, you know, electric chainsaws and, you know, and those big old uh, dooleys like they have now, amen, praise God, you had to do everything by hand, you had to cut down the tree by hand, amen, you have to shape, amen, praise God, the trees into, you know, to log size, you know, praise God, to either build a house or whatever it is, amen, and it was physical work. So, Jesus Christ, amen, he was an old, frail, pale-looking man. If anything, he had great physical strength because he was a carpenter. Amen. But yet, he was meek and lowly. Amen. So, we, we, we can just reject that right now. Amen. And then, of course, amen, praise God, John chapter 4, amen, he was recognized as a Jew. He wasn't recognized as a Roman. He wasn't recognized as a white man, amen, with long hair. Amen. Praise God. He didn't have long hair. Amen. Jews in general, they didn't, men didn't wear long, they didn't have long hair. Amen. So we know, amen, this, amen, European, amen, image is just utter foolishness, amen, from the devil. Amen. And I reject that mess. I thank God for holiness, amen, because before I came into holiness, that's what I thought. Amen. Jesus was a white looking man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Amen. But that's a lie. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, Amen. We're still in Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, for the sake of time, we'll just go to verse 38. And then, of course, you know, as <clears throat> just skipping on down the line, amen, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And then, praise God, the Apostle Peter, amen, who was a true apostle, amen, full of the Holy Ghost. He got to preaching to the people on the day of Pentecost, how Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah, is the Messiah that Amen. They rejected. Amen. And crucified when Pilate was determined to let him go. Amen. Hallelujah. Who was raised from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, amen. He was letting them know that Jesus is the only way. Amen. The only way to heaven. Praise God. And you can read that on your own time in Jesus' name. So we will begin, not verse 38, but let's go into verse 34. So Acts chapter 2, verse 34. And Peter is preaching, he said, For David is not ascended, speaking of King David, for David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Amen. They felt conviction. Amen. They felt some guilt. Amen. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Amen. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. They weren't speaking to, amen, false prophet and the rest of the rails. Amen. They said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? In verse 38, he tells them what must they do. 
Then Peter said unto them, repent. Amen. So you have to turn from the practice of sin. You have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. That's what repentance is all about, denying oneself. Amen. You have to deny yourself of the pleasures of sin, which the Bible says is only for a season. Amen. Whatever your lifespan is, that's the season. Amen. So whether God is pleased that you live to be, amen, in your, your, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, amen. And some people live to be longer than that, 80s and 90s, amen. That's still just a season. Yeah. Amen. Your lifetime is just a season. Then we know people are dropping like flies younger than that. Amen. Not even living to make it to 30. Amen. Dying in their 20s. Dying in their teens. Amen. So the pleasure of sin is only temporary. It's only for a season. Amen. And then he say, repent and be baptized. So after repentance, amen, then you must be baptized. So that's being born again of the water or the birth of baptism of the water. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So in other words, remission means the removal, the forgiveness of sins. That's how one's sins are forgiven when they are baptized in Jesus' name after repentance. Not before repentance, but after repentance. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, amen, once you repent of your sins, amen, then you shall receive that birth of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost will fall. Amen. You may have to tarry and fast and pray like many of the saints have today. Amen. Drop that plate. Praise God. Get in your Bible. Amen. And pray. Amen. And cry out to God. Lord, I need the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because that's the resurrection power. Amen. The Holy Ghost will, hallelujah, that's the only way you're going to have power to, amen, be a part of that first resurrection. You got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, that's the spirit that's going to, amen, change your body, amen, from corruptible to incorruptible. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And be part of that first resurrection. You have that resurrected body. Amen. <coughs> you have to be in Jesus. So, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise, amen, because God don't lie. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are for all, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. So this is a promise. Amen. It's to everybody. Everybody who's willing to obey, amen, the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen, the acts 238 instruction. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It's to everybody. Male, female, Jew or Greek. Amen. White or black, rich or poor. Amen. Because God is no respect of a person. He don't have faith in this. Amen. Praise God. God don't look down on certain people because they poor and look up to certain people because they rich. Amen. God don't have no favoritism at all. Amen. What he looks at, amen. Who's serving me? Who's not? Amen. <laughs> not how much in your bank account, and amen, how much money you put in the bus. Amen. <coughs> because God owns all things. The Bible said the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness of the earth, the world and they that therein dwell. Amen. So you're talking about somebody that owns everything, that created all things, owns all things. So of course money ain't nothing to him. Amen. He owns you. Amen. Praise God. The only thing that he don't own of you is your free will. Because that's something, amen, that God has given everyone. A free will of choice, amen. You have the choice to choose, amen, to do good, amen, or to do evil. Amen. Praise God. So, amen, we, we thank the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, for those of you who are, amen, tuning in through the live stream, amen, this is the Apostolic Holiness Church of Jesus Christ located on the west side of Houston, Texas at 4204 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas 77084 Amen. Current schedule is Sundays at 10 a.m. Amen. The phone line number is 832-360-5812 That's 832-360-5812 The web address is AH. CJC.com 
amen, and I'm Pastor James Eugene Manuel, amen, and you're more than welcome to come and be among us, amen, whether it's visit or fellowship, amen, or praise God, hallelujah, or come together, amen, hallelujah, and be a blessing to us, and we be to you, amen, because, amen, hallelujah, I understand it might be some of you, amen, praise God, we may have came out of holiness, amen, ministries, amen, where the leader that backslid, amen, or that failed, Amen. So you're just sitting at the house discouraged. Amen. Praise God. Be of good courage. Amen. Be encouraged. Amen. Praise God. So hallelujah. Amen. That ain't the case here. Amen. We've been standing with Jesus since. Amen. Praise God. We've been in our early 20s. Amen. We ain't tired yet. Amen. Praise God. So, and the Bible says, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together with other believers as the matter of some is. Amen. Praise God. So we thank God for you. Amen. Tune in and you're more than welcome to come. Amen. To be among us in Jesus' name. So, uh, any questions or comments at this time? No, sir. Right. Right. Good to see you, Brother Lewis. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Sister Lewis. Amen. And Sister White. Amen. And Sister Georgia Ann White. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Sister. Dana Manuel. Thank you. Amen. Sister Elizabeth. Oh. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. We praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in today's message. If you are in or near the Houston area, you are welcome to come and fellowship with us. Our service address is 4204 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas, 77084. Sundays at 10 a.m. You may call us at 832-360-5812. Our web address is ahcjc.com. May God bless you and keep you in the name of Jesus Christ.